Goodreads, or not Goodreads, BookTube. I, would, I have Goodreads on the brain. I was just on the website. Um, I am back today with the daily vlog. Uh, I am going to uh, talk about one book today. Um, it's uh, This Is Where It Ends by Marika Nijkamp. Um, and I have some thoughts before I even get into what the plot of the book is. The, uh, the plot, um, so I'll just do it briefly. Um, this is about a school shooting. Um, it takes place in a small town high school. Um, and I have some serious issues with this book. I really wanted to like it. Um, I think it's a topic that probably needs more books, you know, to open up to discussion uh, in all school grade levels and just as a general you know it's an ongoing problem in American society um, as far as I know I haven't heard of any school shootings outside of the US so it seems to be largely a uh, an, an American phenomena um, but the book's author is not from the United States uh, and um, she she has founded a group that is about diversity in uh, YA, and I want to make sure, let me just double check, I want to make sure that this um, series is YA and not juvenile. Give me one second here, I'll be right back. So it is listed as a YA contemporary uh, fiction, and also as realistic fiction. Um... So the author is the founder of an organization that is specifically has a goal of encouraging and creating diversity in, uh, I guess, specifically YA literature. And I think that's a laudable goal. Um, however, adding diversity for the sake of diversity, I think, is counterproductive. And maybe it's because the author is not American and is writing about small town America and doesn't maybe get that you don't get a a lot of racial di racial cultural diversity in a small town largely um, depending on where you are you're gonna get one type of person and in rural America that you're often talking about white people and there may be a couple of uh, minority families in town or different ethnicities um, but typically, you're not going to find a, a melting pot of racial diversity in small town America. So that was a disconnect right off the bat for me. Every character is ethnically diverse, is racially diverse. Uh, we're talking about diverse sexuality, uh, diverse gender identity, uh, and things like that. So um, I'm not saying that those things are not present in small town America, um, but for the most part, you're not going to find that kind of diversity in small town America. And so right off the bat, the author has distanced me from the story that she wishes to engage me in. Um, so the students are coming back, I think, from winter break as this novel takes off. And they're having their yearly, you know, the principal goes in and does this rah-rah speech about, you know, all the things students should uh, be trying to achieve in their lives, you know, uh, being moral and good citizens and that sort of thing. And about you know the mission kind of of opportunity um which is the name of the town and uh the school um so she's in the middle of this speech and so the story picks up of students you know it's uh told through several different characters um and i didn't make a list but it's basically i think two or three guys and two or three girls and they're all kind of in the same friendship clique you'll have the um so they're reaching the conclusion of the principal speech and they're all getting up to leave the auditorium and uh they discover that the auditorium is locked like they can't get out 
And so there's some confusion regarding that and people are just standing around. Um, and then outside of there um, is one of the narrator's brothers is in the office trying to break into the principal's file cabinet um, because he's noticed that there's a problem with his sister and he doesn't understand what it is. And I don't know why he thinks he's going to find the answer in the school records of anybody at the school. Um, but that's what he's doing. And he's there with his friend who's kind of his partner in crime. Uh, so he is from a, I want to say maybe they're Mexican or Latin American. His friend is uh, Muslim. Uh, his sister is in a lesbian relationship with uh, the sister of who is a dancer, a, ball a ballet dancer, and she's the um, sister of the uh, the kid who's going to turn out to be the antagonist in the story. Um, and then you have a couple other people that you get their perspectives. Um, there's a uh, people doing a uh, practice for track outside and you get a uh, perspective from a couple of those characters um by and large though you're talking about characters that are not very well drawn these are stereotypical um even for their diversity they're just kind of one-dimensional slapdash painted characters um, the novel itself is fairly short, um, so the doors are locked, the guy comes in, and he immediately starts shooting people. Um, and so you're getting a backstory as you go forward in the novel. You're getting people thinking about uh, things, and, and the two characters that were in the principal's office are trying to um, undertake a rescue mission, and then everything takes off from there. Now, I really, like I said, I wanted to like this novel. I think that there are issues here that need to be addressed. Um, but they, uh, the protagonist is just a selfish white kid. Uh, in this family, there's the brother, the sister. The mother has passed away. The father's a violent alcoholic. Um... And I don't know how far I can get into this because it would be a lot of spoilers, but to me, it feels like the development of the protagonist character, um, that the author wants you to kind of feel sorry for him because his mother has passed away and his father's an abusive alcoholic. Um, but that's not the whole story. And if you're really paying attention to the narrative coming from the sister and the, um, the, the sister's girlfriend and her brother, um, that he's just really not a very nice kid and, um, he does things himself that are abusive and he's trying to, I'll just put spoilers on the, I'll just have to mark it as spoilers. I'm going to talk about this. Um, and, and so if you don't, have not read the book and you don't want to hear the spoilers you should stop watching now because I'm going to give away major plot points and I'm going to discuss um, what trouble I had with this so the sister the mother in this family in the in the in the shooters family was a ballet dancer and it was a hard life for her and um, she died and the father then became an alcoholic and he became extremely abusive and his daughter has talent as a ballet dancer and has been practicing in secret because the father won't let her. And as the narrative develops, we find out that um, the brother keeps saying, everybody is taking my sister away from me. They're taking my family away from me. But we find out that what he's really doing is he is telling on her and creating situations where the father then abuses her while this kid stands by and watches and then comes around and consoles her. Um, he basically, the major plot drama is when he takes her ballet slippers that she's been 
practicing in this outbuilding on their land um, to the father and says, look, look, she's um, practicing ballet. And then watches the father beat her mercilessly and then comes and says, you know, tries to comfort her and, try, and is trying to reestablish this relationship he feels they're losing because um, she's got a girlfriend and he has negative feelings about uh, the girlfriend um, specifically because it's a lesbian relationship, but also because he doesn't want her to have a relationships or friend, friends with anybody. They're, I think they're twins or they're very close in age, but I think that they're twins. And um, he just wants her to need him. She, he wants her focus to be exclusively on him and for her to have no other friendships and no other interests or anything. He wants to be it as far as her relationships go. It's just the two of them against the world. And he feels like she's being pulled away by the girlfriend, by her friends, by her interest in ballet. Um, he sees her, you know, they're in their senior year. They're getting ready for their futures. And um, she wants to go to New York and, um, you know, pursue ballet professionally. And he is so focused on himself and his own wants and needs that he is an abuser himself. So I have a problem with that. And also, this is the only apparently white family in the town. <laughs> so the bad guys are the white people. And, and that's, I have to say, that's probably fairly um, true to character. I think most school shooters have been white kids. I, you know, in small town America, you're going to find predominantly white families. Um, so even if I discount all the sexual diversity, the gender diversity, the racial diversity, the cultural diversity, um, I just... really struggled with this kid as the protagonist um, because he's just painted as evil flat out. We're not talking about like maybe say in One of Us is Lying. Uh, this is going to be spoilery too. So if you haven't read One of Us is Lying, don't watch this part. Um, in One of Us is Lying, the uh, killer, you know, the person who's causing all the drama and is ruining people's lives, um, had kind of similar motivations, but they were, mm, he felt like he was being cheated out of what was his due. So he wasn't being recognized for his intelligence, for his talents, for, you know, he was being shunted out of friendships that he felt he deserved. He felt like I get, he got cheated out of a relationship with a girl that he wanted to be with. Um, you know, so you, in looking at, I think one of the most fascinating things, you know, if you want to coach it in those terms, one of the most fascinating things about these school shooters is what are their motivations? We often hear that they're, you know, loners, outsiders, um, that they felt like they were bullied or picked on, that uh, life had not given them a fair shake. Uh But you really wonder at the back end, what is their motivation? And you get it with this kid. You get to see what his motivation is. He feels like he's going to be left all alone with his father. He isn't, you know, he's intelligent, but he hasn't applied himself. Um, he has no university prospects. He sees himself stuck in this town with his alcoholic father. And, and you know, he's going out hunting with his father and I think is being groomed by his father kind of to be an abusive personality. And uh, you see kind of the making of a monster in the progress here. And I don't know that that's always the case with school shooters. I think that there are people who desperately are seeking attention and help, but they're going about it in a way that guarantees they're not going to get the uh, attention that they seek, not in the way that they seek it, not positive attention. And um, that it almost always ends in the death of the shooter. Um, and all the way to the end of the book, Leo, he hunted for his sister through the whole school. And the conclusion is that he does shoot himself and die. He shoots the girlfriend's brother. And then he shoots her in the knee to ensure that, essentially, 
if I can't have you, no one can, ensuring that she will never be able to pursue her passion in life, the ballet, um, relegating her to a miserable small town life, presumably, because that was her passion, her goal, her... Um, so she might stay with the girlfriend and they might have a long relationship, but she's never going to achieve the things in life that she wanted, so she'll just become what he would have been had he lived, a bitter, unhappy, unfulfilled person. So he took the easy way out. He shot himself so he didn't have to deal with any of the consequences for what he's done. But he also, in checking out, fully ruined her life as well. So just a monster from the beginning to the end. When he's in the cafeteria and he's shooting people, he's not shooting people he has a grudge against. He's just shooting people. He's shooting the good people. He's shooting the teachers that have helped people. He's shooting students that have aspirations and goals in life. He, uh, and sometimes he's just randomly shooting. He doesn't care who he hits. He just wants to be the center of attention. He wants everybody to look at and listen to him and he doesn't care who goes down. So he's not taking out specifically anybody he has a grudge against or that he feels has wronged him. He is just killing people to kill them. You are my audience. You will pay attention to me. And if you don't, I don't care who dies. Um, and I have to say, it appeared that he had one semi-automatic pistol and some clips. I don't know why... A mass of students did not rush him. Yes, some of them would have died, but probably not nearly as many as he got away with killing. I think that by the end of the book, it was close to 40 people that were dead and many more injured, um, not to mention the psychological trauma of having lived through this. And it literally was just random. He didn't care who he killed. He, d he didn't have a mission beyond, look at me, I am the center of attention. You have ignored me and discounted me and... Uh, you know, treated me like white trash and you're not going to get to do that anymore. Um, and then uh, once, you know, the brother of the girlfriend of the sister of the killer um, manages to open the auditorium and start shoveling people out um, without the killer knowing it. You know, he gets a lot of people out of there. Um, and... I feel like even in that instance, then he didn't just start shooting people in the auditorium, which is probably what, you know, if he was going for maximum kill, he should have just started unloading on the people in there. He went out and tried to hunt down the people that got away. Um, like he just couldn't bear the idea that anybody was going to escape his wrath. Um... So there's just at the end the sense of characters I didn't really care about. I certainly couldn't find any sympathy for the shooter. And maybe that was the author's goal is to make the shooter as unsympathetic as possible. So you couldn't possibly like him. So you're just looking at the results of his actions. Um, and I do kind of have a problem with that because there's something wrong in the way we deal with youth now that is making people think that this is their option, that this is the way to deal with it, that they're going to go out in the world and show people that um, if they can't get the accolades or the attention or whatever it is they need, that they're going to hurt other people um, to show them that they have power um, when they didn't, that they, that they genuinely have power over other people and you know we just I think tend to um, there's a certain celebrity around that but I don't know that um, in terms of at least media coverage we talk about you know their behavior before and during um, their friendships or lack thereof, their re relationship with their parents. But we don't really get down to the nitty gritty of what creates this psychosis in people where that's their solution to the problems in their life. 
where it gets that bad, where nobody saw it coming, that this loner kid suddenly is shooting, you know, 10, 12, 15, 20 people, um, has a manifesto, it, you know, I feel like there's a dialogue that needs to be happening. Um, and perhaps it is, you know, I don't have kids in, in high school or, or middle school anymore. Um, but I felt like at the end of the book, I, it was a horrific event, but I didn't feel particularly bad for any of the characters because we didn't get to know them really well. Um, the worst thing I could say is that that poor girl's probably going to live out her life now as white trash in small town America because her brother was an asshole and shot her in the knee when she had genuine talent and an opportunity to do something with her life that she really wanted to do. And he literally stole that away from her. But he also killed the girlfriend's brother, so that's a problem. And he killed countless, 40 people in a small town high school. That's a significant portion of the, of the attending students. Um, just destroyed lives, ruined families, a huge, horrible tragedy. Um, all because he couldn't deal with his sister having a girlfriend and goals in life. Um, and it doesn't go much beyond that except to say that he was being groomed by his father to be abusive, uh, to have a low opinion of women, to, uh, lionize gun culture and hunting. Um, and kind of male dominance, I guess. Um, so now that I've rambled on to really no point, um, I didn't feel close to any of the characters or identify with any of them. I identify with the tragedy as a whole. Like, this is indeed, it's a horrific event. There's no doubt about it. And the motivations of the killer just leave my, you know, my mouth drop down to the floor. Um, but as a book overall, I think that the author threw in diversity that wouldn't exist in this situation just for the sake of having the diversity. And I'm against that. I think diversity is great. I think it should be in books, yes. But diversity, but creating this melting pot of characters in every novel or having that be the goal of every novel, that every novel must have ethnic, cultural, sexual, gender I diversity, requiring it, pushing it as an agenda, um, instead of letting it form organically when the situation is correct, and basically saying, well, we're tired of white characters and we're going to force you all to have diversity, um, that I can't get behind. I want to see diverse characters in, you know, in more books. I want to see books about, you know, where are the books like um, Devil's Wake and, uh, Domino Falls, the, the seven characters there, um, uh, you're talking about Native Americans, um, a number, uh, I think four of the seven characters are African American, uh, the two are, uh, Native American brothers, and then, uh, I think there are a couple of, uh, Mexican or Latin American characters. So the core in the story there are not white characters, and they encounter, you know, white people on their journey, um, but the story itself is about characters who are non-white. And so where are more stories like that? Why are we forcing diversity on people in situations where there might not be diversity? Um, so I applaud diversity in novels, but not where it's being forced, where it's diversity because the author thinks there should be more diversity in a situation where it might not organically exist, and, and that I don't agree with. Um, it takes away from the story, I think, in this case. Um, it's just unbelievable to me that there would be this much diversity in a small rural American town. Um, so that took me out of the story, uh, just the utter, there was nothing human about the shooter. He was, you know, sure he was a brother and a son 
and he had lost his mother and he was living with an abusive parent but there is nothing about him that is redeeming all they can say is that he was coldly calculating in his intelligence um so oh boo hoo poor tyler didn't get a fair shake and so he's gonna go out and shoot everybody um But there's also that problem where, it, and maybe particularly in small towns, where you know somebody's living in an abusive situation. And I would suppose that everybody in this town knew that he was living in an abusive situation, and nobody did anything about it. They just let it happen. And you could see that he was in an abusive situation in the way he behaved at school before he got expelled. So rather than solving the problem that existed in the home, Everybody just kind of looked the other way, and the situation grew out of that. So it's not just the fault of Tyler or Tyler's father or their family situation. It Also, I feel like there's an, a certain ownership in the community for that problem. To just let somebody be abused, be in an abusive situation, watch him develop into an abusive personality um, when he may not have been to begin with. So, um, those are all the issues I have with this book. And I really did want to like it. Um, but I could not. I wound up giving it one star. Um, I initially started it at three. And the longer I thought about it, and the more I thought about it, the less I just... Eventually I was like, no, this is a one star book. I can't. I can't give it more than that. And it tried to be a good book, but it didn't get there. So I've rambled on enough about this book. Um, don't jump all over me because I talk about how there shouldn't be diversity in this book. Um, diversity should never be forced. It should, uh, you know, I would love to see more books with characters who are diverse, with uh, a cast that is non-white, certainly more often. You don't see it often enough um, in books. But maybe that's because most authors, uh, I guess, that are being published right now are white. Um, but as, you know, as with the book of you know, Devil's Wake and Domino's Falls, I would, I didn't even really think about it until some, I read a review somewhere of Devil's Wake and they're like, and they was talking about the, um, non-white cat, cat, cast, I'm using that, but it was talking about how there were no non-white main characters and, um, it was almost a complaint, but I hadn't really thought about it. I was just thinking in terms of, they were all teenagers trying to survive an apocalypse. Um, so I, it's not that I didn't know they were not, not, you know, not white. It's just that it didn't draw me out of the story that they were uh, not white. So it served the novel well, you know, it, and it was nice to read about characters who aren't, you know, the norm for most books that are published today um but where this author is kind of on a hobby horse about pushing an agenda of diversity um i think that you know in the case of her novel it takes away and that it could possibly take away by maybe bullying new authors into thinking they have to create diversity for diversity's sake rather than letting it grow organically based on the type of novel you're writing, you know. So um, I would like to see that much more organically created diversity when it's appropriate for the story. And also, you know, own voices authors, more authors that are non-white getting published and becoming popular um, in terms of books. Um, old white people have <laughs> had a run for a good long time. I don't see why others shouldn't. Um, have the chance to uh, run with their uh, literary, you know, goals or their, whatever their passions are in terms of writing. So, um, in this book, I just think that um, it drew f away from the story because it wasn't a realistic um, set of characters for a rural, small-town high school. Um yeah, hated this book. Wouldn't recommend it. Sorry. See you guys next time. If you watched to the end and all my rambling, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.